Silo's second theorem tells us that any two Silo P subgroups of a group are conjugate. A subgroup of a group is said to be a Silo P subgroup if the order of that subgroup is P, where P is any prime number. For example, in the group Z6, the subgroups R and T have orders 2 and 3 respectively. Therefore, R and T are Silo 2 subgroup and Silo 3 subgroup respectively. Two elements A and B of a group are said to be conjugate if there exists a third element in that group, say G, such that G inverse times BG is equal to A. Let's take a look at an example. Let's take the dihedral group D3 that contains all those different triangles which are obtained when we rotate or flip a triangle about its axis of symmetry. Let's take the triangle ABC and let's take two different copies of this triangle. For the first triangle, let's keep the vertex A fixed and let's flip this triangle about the vertical axis of symmetry. We end up getting the triangle ACB. For the second triangle, if we keep the vertex B fixed, and flip this triangle about this axis of symmetry, we end up getting the triangle CBA. Symbolically, the triangle ABC gets transformed into triangle ACB in the first case, while in the second case, the triangle ABC gets transformed into triangle CBA. If we flip the first triangle again about the same axis of symmetry, we end up getting the same triangle ABC that we started with. Similarly, if we flip the second triangle again about the same axis of symmetry, we end up getting the same triangle ABC that we started with. And what does that mean? It means both these triangles have order 2. Because if we flip both these triangles twice about the same axis of symmetry, we end up getting the same triangle that we started with. Therefore, both these triangles are Silo 2 subgroups of the triangle ABC. And by Silo's second theorem, both these triangles, say G1 and G2, must be conjugate, which means there must exist a third triangle, say H, such that H inverse times G1H is equal to G2. Let's take H to be the triangle CAB. On performing simple multiplication of permutations, we can show that H inverse times G1H is equal to G2. Therefore, G1 is conjugate to G2.